for someone with knowledge from CTFs, from playing on HTB, Vonhub, literally not so much knowledge of real world stuff in cybersecurity, how could they get their first client? And let's say they don't have any certification. Is that even possible? I, I don't think so. I mean, so you could absolutely, and there's companies out there that do this, that sell pen tests and have no idea what a pen test really is. Um, and they might just run a Nessa scan and, you know, just slap on their, their logo and call it a day. Uh, and that's really doing an injustice to not only that company, but to the community, especially if there's a breach or something along those lines. Uh, so I think that <laughs> it might be more possible if you're a good salesperson to land that land a client, uh, but if you're going to land a job, there you have no chance. Um, you you need that practicality in order to be any anyway competitive. It it happens a lot on Upwork and other platforms like this, uh, where they actually sell penetration tests for two hundred or three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and they they their delivery is like two or three days for a target with large assets, and it kind of takes away. Uh, the job for someone who's much more qualified and ready to deliver a high quality report. Absolutely. Yeah, I went on Upwork as well and just noticed people are doing like $5 an hour, which you're, there's no way you're going to get a quality pen test at those prices. And if that's what you're, you're wanting to pay for a pen test, you're really going to suffer for uh, your infrastructure and your security. Do you think that there are places where people or cybersecurity beginners, let's say penetration testers that want to get some sort of a remote gig can go online, for example, to get a, to get like projects, a site of Upwork, for example? I know of at least one. You can add in how many you know of. Cobalt.io is the website that I was thinking of. And you have to have some, some knowledge. Um, like the process involves applica application and doing a uh, like a CTF style, but a kind of realistic website and you write a report on the, the findings that you have and then you actually get in and then you have the opportunities to make money to do actual pen tests. The nice thing for me about it, and I've done a couple there, was that you get the opportunity to work with other people. So usually you're not the only one on the pen test, there's at least two or three of you. And that opportunity is worth its, its weight in gold because the, the pay, at least for somebody like uh, that's already in the field, it wasn't really great for me, but for somebody that's a, in a country where the cost of living is lower or somebody who's like a college student, great opportunities to get experience. The people that I was working with, one of the guys on my team was top three on the Synac Red Team. So like, you have to understand if you're doing a web app with somebody who's top three on the Synac Red Team, then they're going to be able to find some pretty neat bugs and you get open source access to their, their findings and how they did it. Uh, so you don't usually get to see that in bug bounty write-ups. Even the good bug bounty write-ups are obfuscated a lot of the times. Uh, so it's, it's awesome experience to actually be able to get paid and work with some really talented people. If you want to gain an edge over other cybersecurity professionals, Take my Python for Pentesters course and uh, learn how to leverage the power of Python in penetration testing and cybersecurity. Link in the description. There might be other indirect ways of um, getting jobs. I've seen a lot of stuff. Uh, I've seen people getting jobs uh, even from Twitter, from Reddit, and even from LinkedIn. So these are kind of unconventional ways, but there's often, if you follow a lot of people in cybersecurity, uh, you often see these uh, tweets, one-liner job offer, and sometimes you can get into that. Some of the stuff that I've seen uh, can also be remote. I think there is a lot of opportunity, so uh, the idea would be to have an abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. and also, uh, probably your number one requirement would, would be your skill. Yes, and something that I can add on to that is your ability to network is important, super important. If you, if you have a blog or a Twitter or you're in Slack channels or Discord channels or whatever, if you're involved in the community and you make your name known and you start to meet other people, when the job opens up, they might just say, hey, I know this person, I like this person, I'm gonna bring this person on. Even if you might not be the most qualified, maybe they're willing to mentor you or train you and bring you on because they're somebody you know and that they're comfortable with already. It's not only a cliche or a stereotype, but I think that this is reality that a lot of people in cybersecurity, unfortunately, don't have this uh, 
like networking skill. It may be just me. Yeah, I think it's it's something that you have to practice and get better at. Uh, I think that a lot of IT people are maybe shy, uh, maybe introverts as well. I'm absolutely an introvert. Uh, me too. Yeah, so like it's it's that personality type. You're the shy guy behind the computer, or the shy girl behind the computer. You know, like it it's just what it is. So you got to put yourself out there and just try to be sociable with people. You know, uh, chat where you can and just. Even if you're helping out others and people see that, like you're, you're in a Discord channel and you're helping people solve problems and people see that, it's going to look good for you. You're going to start to meet people. Uh, it, it takes time to build up a network. But when I was first, when I was first getting into the field, uh, at least two of my interviews were because of people that I knew. And, uh, you know, it's, it's super, super useful to be able to, to have that network behind you.